Welcome to this video demonstration of line probe assay for direct detection of tuberculosis and resistance to rifampicin and isonic acid in sputum. Line probe assay LPA as it is generally called is a molecular test developed for rapid and direct detection of tubercle bacilli and resistance to rifampicin and isonic acid from sputum. In India, the genotype MTBDR plus kit developed by the Heinz Life Sciences Germany is used. The assay can be used on specimen or on culture and has been recommended by the revised national tuberculosis control program. This picture shows the procedure to be followed with LPA. First is DNA extraction from the processed or decontaminated specimen pellet. Second is amplification of specific targets in the genome. Third is to hybridization of the amplified product to the specific probes immobilized on the nitrocellulose membrane. And fourth is to evaluate the bands that are generated and interpretation based on the bands developed. Let us begin with the extraction of DNA from the sputum sample. This is performed using the genolyze kit and 500 microliter of the processed sputum deposit is centrifuged at 10,000 G for 15 minutes to obtain the maximum bacterial content in a pellet. 100 microliter of lysis buffer is added, mixed well by vortexing and incubated at 95 degree C in a hot air oven for 5 to 7 minutes. 100 microliter of neutralization buffer is added, mixed well and centrifuged at 15,000 G for 5 minutes. The supernatant containing the DNA is removed and stored at minus 20 degrees till use. We will now see the demonstration as it is done in the laboratory. We have two decontaminated sputum pellets from which DNA is to be extracted, the genolyze kit contents and other requirements. Solution A is the lysis buffer and solution B is the neutralization buffer. The vials contain 500 microliter of the decontaminated sputum deposit suspended in phosphate buffer. They are placed in the rotor, the external surface of which is wiped using dis disinfectant. And placed in the microfuge for centrifugation at 10,000 G for 15 minutes. After centrifugation is over, the rotor is removed and is taken to the biosafety cabinet. The vials are removed from the rotor. Here we see the compact pellet at the bottom of the vial. This has all the bacterial content in the sample and DNA is to be extracted from this. The supernatant is carefully removed, taking care not to disturb the pellet.
the pellet is still at the bottom of the vial. To this pellet 100 microliter of the lysis buffer is added. The contents are mixed well. Once the lysis buffer is added to both the vials, they are vortexed. Now, the vials are placed in a hot air oven which is preheated to 95 degrees for 5 minutes. The temperature has dropped to 93 and so we will start the timer once it reaches 95 and this incubation continues for 5 minutes. After incubation, the vials are brought to the cabinet and 100 microliter of solution B is added to the that is the neutralization buffer is added. The vials are the contents are mixed well by vortexing. and they are to be centrifuged again at 15000 G for 5 minutes. Once the centrifugation is completed, the vials are taken out inside the biosafety hood. The pale yellow colored supernatant contains the DNA and about 100 microliter of this is removed and transferred to a screw capped vial. And stored at minus 20 degree C till further use. With every batch of DNA extraction, it is preferable to use a negative control using only the reagents as part of quality control. The DNA is now ready. We now move on to the next step which is amplification of the specific genomic targets. First is to do the master mix preparation followed by the actual PCR or amplification. 
The volume of reaction mix for every sample is 50 microliter that is 10 microliter of solution A and 35 microliter of solution B and 5 microliter of DNA. In order to avoid pipetting errors, a master mix is prepared for all samples and then distributed into different individual aliquots to which 5 microliter of DNA is added and PCR is done using the following cycle which is 15 minutes at 95 degree for one cycle, 30 seconds at 95 degree followed by 2 minutes at 58 degree 10 cycles followed by 25 seconds at 95 degrees, 40 seconds at 53 degrees, 40 seconds at 70 degrees for 30 cycles and the final step being 8 minutes at 70 degrees for one cycle. This is done in an exclusive facility called the master mix room which is the cleanest room where no other activity is permitted in order to prevent DNA contamination. The kit contains two solutions, this is AMP B which contains the salts specific primers and the dye and solution A contains the nucleotides, buffer and tag polymerase. For every reaction, 10 microliter of solution A and 35 microliter of solution B is required. So, the total volume of solutions to be mixed is calculated based on the number of DNA samples, one positive control and one master mix negative control and one additional reaction to allow for pipetting errors. That is, if we have 7 DNA samples, then the volume is to be calculated for 10 reactions. First, the larger volume solution B is added followed by solution A. The two solutions are mixed well. Now, the master mix is ready for aliquoting. Using a disposable DNA free disposable forceps, the PCR tubes are removed and arranged on the rack. The pipette is adjusted to 45 microliter and 45 microliter of the master mix is then aliquoted onto each PCR tube. Care is taken to avoid any air bubbles. Once the aliquoting is completed, the PCR tubes are closed and the master mix solution is discarded. The AM solutions are placed back at minus 20 degrees. All the PCR tubes are checked to verify whether they are closed completely and that they contain 45 microliter of the master mix. It is preferable to maintain a log showing the 
date, laboratories number of the samples, the controls and the volumes of solution A and solution B used for preparing the master mix. We shall now see the demonstration of DNA addition and the PCR protocol. The PCR tubes containing 45 microliter each of the reaction mix is brought to the PCR hood, arranged and they are labeled. It is preferable not to touch the vials at this stage to prevent DNA contamination. The DNA samples are removed from minus 20 degree storage. To each PCR tube, 5 microliter of the corresponding DNA is added from the respective DNA sample. A mixer gently. Once all the tubes are or all the samples are added, the tubes are closed tightly and taken to the thermocycler. They are arranged inside the thermocycler. It is preferable to keep them well separated to avoid any cross contamination during the amplification process. Once all the tubes are placed, the lids are pressed to make sure they are closed tightly. The preset program in the thermocycler is selected and the amplification is started. We now move on to hybridization. The steps that are involved in hybridization include denaturation of the double stranded amplicon, inclusion of the nitrocellulose membrane with the immobilized probes, hybridization of the amplicon to the probe in the presence of buffer, stringent wash to remove the traces of buffer, binding of the hybridized amplicon to the diluted conjugate, wash to remove excess of conjugate and binding of the conjugate to the substrate, wash to remove the excess of substrate. Interpretation of results is done based on the banding pattern that is observed. We shall now see the actual procedure demonstration. This procedure is done in the hybridization room which is well separated from the master mix room. The MTB DR plus test kit that is demonstrated here contains the DEN solution that denatures the amplicon, the high buffer or the hybridization buffer that facilitates binding of the a single stranded amplicon to the immobilized probe, stringent wash solution, the conjugate 
diluent and the conjugate concentrate which is used for diluting the conjugate 1 in 100 substrate diluent and the substrate concentrates. This vial contains the nitrocellulose membrane strips onto which the specific probes are bound. Here we shall see the manual protocol using the twin incubator and the tray that is provided along with the kit to perform the hybridization. This machine is called the GT blot and can perform hybridization on auto mode with all solutions being dispensed automatically and all steps being programmed into it. To begin the procedure, the tray is placed on a clean absorbent paper on the table and 20 microliter of the dense solution is added to each well. Here each well corresponds to one test The dense solution is placed at one corner of the well. After adding den to all the required wells, 20 microliter of the amplicon is added to the well. The two solutions are mixed well by gentle pipetting. One by one, the amplicons are added to the corresponding wells and mix it with the dense solution. Once all the amplicons are added, The mix is allowed to stand at room temperature for 5 minutes with shaking in the twin incubator. This step causes denaturation of the double stranded amplicon. After the incubation, 1 ml of pre warmed hybridization buffer at a temperature of 45 degrees is added to each well after addition of high buffer to all the wells the contents are mixed gently. After ensuring uniform mixing, the next step is to place the nitrocellulose membrane strip into each well. The strip is provided with a marker on one end of the strip and space is provided for labeling. Using a clean dispo disposable forcep, the labeled strip is removed and placed inside the well with the marker side facing upwards. Once all the strips are placed, they mix it gently. The tray is then placed in the twin incubator which is already programmed to perform all the steps. The instrument now is preheated to 45 degrees. The 
the hybridization step extends for 30 minutes at 45 degrees C. The two incubator maintains constant shaking and temperature throughout the step. After 30 minutes, the tray is removed and the hybridization buffer is removed from each well using a pasture pipette. Next, 1 ml of pre warmed stringent wash at a temperature of 45 degree is added to each well. This step or the stringent wash removes any traces of the hybridization buffer that was used in the previous step. The tray is now placed in the two incubator. This step extends for 15 minutes at 45 degrees. After the incubation, the tray is removed, the stringent wash is removed from each well and the tray is washed. In a similar fashion, The strips are exposed to 1 in 100 diluted conjugate washed and finally, to 1 in 100 diluted substrate. These reactions can be done at room temperature, but the tray needs to be covered from light during the last step with substrate and once the bands develop, the substrate is removed and the strips are washed in distilled water, the strips are then pasted. The strips have developed a clear banding pattern. The first four are from patient samples. The well number 5 is from a positive control strain, which is usually a susceptible clinical isolate. Well 6 and 7 are negative controls, one from the master mix negative control and one from the extraction negative control. Strips 1 to 3 are susceptible strains and strip 4 has a mutant band in the rifampicin area. They are red using a scoring card. Strips 6 and 7 have no bands excepting the two expected amplification control and conjugate control. The band patterns are red using a scoring card. All the completed strips are pasted to an interpretation chart scored and the results are interpreted as susceptible or resistant to the drug based on the banding pattern. Using the same principle. LPA can be performed for identification of non tuberculous mycobacteria. Here DNA is extracted from culture and specific region is amplified using a different set of primers and hybridized, hybridized to different set of probes. The kits that are used are mycobacterium CM or AS. Based on the band formation, species are identified clearly. Here we see M abscesses, M intracellulare and M garden A, they are identified using the banding pattern. So, we will now see the advantages and disadvantages of line probe assay. Advantages include, it is possible for simultaneous, simultaneous detection of the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex and resistance to rifampicin and isoniazid acid directly from sputum samples. It is possible to detect low level and high level isoniazid acid resistance. The test is rapid and different kinds of kits are available for diagnosis of pre XDR that is the extensively drug resistant tuberculosis and XDR and speciation of predominant pathogenic NTM. The disadvantages include that the LPA is recommended for smear positive specimens and for cultures. The test is expensive. It costs about 800 to 1000 rupees per test. 
there is requirement of sophisticated infrastructure like biosafety level 3 laboratories and clean uh, separate clean rooms for each function. Rigorous training is required for interpretation of results. With this we come to the end of the video demonstration of LPA for direct detection of TB and resistance to rifampicin and isoniazid. Thank you.